What's up guys, how you doing? My name is Jose Colorado. I'm a five year professional basketball player, mainly in Latin America, Central America. And today I wanted to talk a bit about El Salvador. Now El Salvador is a very interesting league because I've seen a lot of players come from here and springboard their league into better playing salaries, better paying jobs, better leagues in Asia, Latin America, Europe. Um, and so it's a pretty interesting prospect. Maybe you're someone who's watching this, who's uh, interested in playing in El Salvador. Maybe you got in touch with one of the teams there. Maybe you just know someone who's playing there. So there's a lot of different things that you need to know prior to heading there so that you can maximize your success. And uh, that's what I wanna try and help you guys with today is understand the market, understand what the pay will be like, understand what the playing conditions will be like, understand what opportunities might be for you afterwards, after having completed a season in El Salvador. And basically, what is, the, what is the ceiling? What is the cap of salary that you can earn within El Salvador? So let's get right into it. When thinking about El Salvador, there are two leagues that we have to be aware, aware of. The first one, the Liga Mayor de Baloncesto. And the second one, La Liga Superior de Baloncesto, the LMB and the LSB. Now, based on what league you're in, it's really going to vary as to your pay grade, your your living conditions, your opportunities afterwards, um, and your marketability in all honesty. So let's start off with the first one. The first one is the LSB, Liga Superior de Baloncesto. In this league, they're allowed one import. Uh, usually in terms of what we're looking at in a pay grade is about anywhere from free playing for basically free. They just cover your expenses to a maximum of maybe around $1,700 in American USD. So from free to maybe $1,700. Now I actually did a blog post about this and we did a player survey within El Salvador and I'll link that in the description below. But uh, what we found was that was pretty much the range that players can expect with the vast majority of players getting in between that $1,000 to $1,500 uh, range in the Liga Superior. Now, in comparison, in the LMB, you're allowed three imports in this league. So that obviously opens up a bunch of more slots for import players, for Americans, for whatever nationality who want to play there. And when you're thinking of the LMB, you're thinking of a higher pay grade. So some players as well can start at about free or playing for pretty much just covering their expenses, the team just covering their expenses. And they can go all the way up to, we had our highest reported salary be $5,000, which is actually quite a bit when you think about uh, where El Salvador ranks globally. Uh, in the FIBA rankings, I think in their last FIBA ranking, they were about 138 in the world. And in Central America, they're the second worst ranked country, but they're paying the third best salary in all of Central America. But we also saw, saw a bunch of players earning above $2,000 in the $3,000 range, which is now we're talking about basically middle tier salaries in professional basketball. That's pretty tough to get to in a lot of these countries. Um, so it is a really interesting prospect of playing in the LMB uh, just because of the pay grade, um, how financially backed the teams are, and the structure in general. I won't get into that too much. You can read the blog post if you want to uh, understand more about that. But just understand that in terms of salary, the LMB is always going to be more than the LSB. And another important thing that imports must know is that in the LSB, the imports are basically only going to be called or they're only basically going to need an import service uh, for the playoffs. So they actually don't have the financial budget to pay an import for the entire season. It is extremely rare that an import in the LSB will start from the start of the season and go all the way until they finish their season in the playoffs. It just doesn't happen there. They just don't have the budget. They don't have the, the requirements. So what they'll do usually is they will get a player, an import, maybe in the last couple of games of the season, and then they'll get them for the playoffs for sure. Every team will pretty much have an import, no matter what, for the playoffs. And that can be your opportunity. Now in the LMB, pretty much all of the teams will start with an import from the beginning of the season. They will all start with three imports. Some of them may start with one and, and then basically bide their time and wait 
maybe until halfway through the season or a quarter through the season because they know that they want an import who uh, is going to cost a bit more. So they may they may stall it for a bit, see how they do, and then bring in the import just maybe for the second half of the season because they may be asking for a salary of around four thousand, three thousand dollars, whatever. Um, but in general, most of the teams will start with three imports in the LMB. Recently, there was in the LMB, this is in the Liga Mayor de Baloncesto, there was a salary cap that was put in um, for nine thousand dollars per team. $9,000 per team per month. So just think about it. If you have three imports, say they're all making uh, 2000 a piece, and then you have 3000 for the rest of the nationals or something like that, or they can break it up however they want. They can have one import making 5000 and one import making 1000 and one import making 500 and then the rest of the nationals, whatever they make. Uh, it's just that the, the thought is that there is a cap on how much you can earn. Um, now, before in El Salvador, in the LMB, there wasn't a cap. They just, you could pay whatever you paid, you paid, and players came from all over the place. Um, but that doesn't exist anymore. So that's kind of um, brought down the salaries a bit in recent years. But you can still make a decent wage there. Um, in the LSB, there is no salary cap. There is no salary cap in the LSB, but they realistically can't pay. Like I said earlier, they are financially strapped for the most part, so they can't pay too much. They can't pay above. I've never heard anyone getting above 1700 1800 And remember, this is only for the playoffs for so maybe a month. Another thing you should know about El Salvador is that you can start off. Uh, I've seen, I've seen this many times. And in fact, there was many people, there was many players in the, in the survey that reported this, that they, they started off at about $500 and then they moved up all the way. I saw one player moved up all the way to $3,500. So that's pretty, that's a pretty nice pay grade. So that gets the most important question out of the way, which is the salary. That is what a lot of people want to know, but perhaps equally as important is the play style in both of these leagues. Because you have to consider as an LSB import, again, the league where you're only given one import per team, as an LSB import, you're going to be given much more freedom to do basically whatever you want. Um, so in the LMB, you're going to have three imports. And then sometimes you may even have a few nationals of so Salvadorians who are pretty much nationalized as Salvadorians. So there's a there's a few American Salvadorians in the league. There's a few Canadian Salvadorians, myself being one. Um, so the competition level is going to be much higher in the LMB, and you're going to have to share the ball a lot more in the LMB. Uh, there's going to be less shots to go around. You're not going to have as big a responsibility, which can be a good and a bad thing. For instance, in the LSB, because it's only you, you can pretty much show everything you can do in your game. If you want to work on pick and roll situations and put that on your film, you can basically do that every game. You can work on get into the hole. You can work on your standstill threes. You can work on pull-ups. You can work on whatever you want to do in the LSB because your coaches and your team is going to depend so much on you in the LSB that basically you have free reign to do whatever you want. Uh, so that will look great on film. But the problem with the LSB is that they actually don't have a TV sponsorship. They don't have the same uh, production value as the LMB. So in the LSB, it's going to be pretty hard to get some good film. You, you'll basically get a steady camera, just a kid moving a film, uh, recording it from side to side. Uh, whereas in the LMB, they have, uh, they, have Tigo, they have a company named Tigo Sports, which is actually one of the largest media companies in Latin America. And this company produces excellent, excellent uh, video and excellent highlights for people. Um, I've created multiple highlights for players from the LMB and seen them go on to other leagues uh, in Greece, uh, Vietnam. Um, there was one who went to the Middle East. You have this presentable film. This gives, this gives these teams and these coaches, it basically just doesn't give them one more reason to write you off. Because if you have a grainy film and they don't know where you are on the film and they have to strain their eyes to see it all the time, they're just not going to watch it. That's just the reality of it. I've seen it all over the place. So, you know, the film is a huge part uh, for me that I've seen just make a world of difference between LMB and LSB teams. Now, 
ultimately you can probably understand that I'm getting at players, in my opinion, should shoot for the LMB when it comes to El Salvador professional basketball. LMB is where it's at. But if you can't get into the LMB, I would recommend you go into the LSB if you can. I wouldn't just turn it down altogether because the thing is, once you're in the LSB, coaches, teams, players, it's a very small community uh, in El Salvador and all of the basketball community in general and all of Central America. It's a very small community. Everyone knows everyone. Everyone knows who's playing in what leagues, what imports are where. And if you show out when you're in the LSB, then you can just move right on up to the LMB the next season. I've seen that all the time. And then they just go right up to the LMB and then they start making the better money where it's you're talking about 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, whatever it is. But you're talking about better production, better value, a better opportunity for you to then go into other leagues and springboard that to another league. Those are some of the negatives of playing in El Salvador, regardless of the LMB or the LSB, but just El Salvador professional basketball in general. One of the main, I would say the biggest negative is that all of the courts are not up to standard. In North America, uh, we are so used to courts being on hardwood, uh, the courts being nicely lit, the courts being clean for the most part. But in El Salvador, you are playing on cement or some sort of tile flooring. Uh, I'm not kidding you, literally cement like you're on the blacktop outside. This can just take a beating on your knees and the courts sometimes are not the most well maintained so you know this is something that you really have to be wary of uh just before you head out there you have to be ready to play in any condition when you're there some of the rims are bent some of the courts are slippery some of the courts are cement the fans are crazy now another thing with the lmb and the lsb is that there is actually two seasons two seasons every year so these seasons roughly run from about February to about May or June. It really depends on when uh, the preseason starts and when the playoffs end. But we can say maybe February to May or June, about four or five months. Then the other season, which is called Closura, the opening season is called Apertura. The, the closing season is called Closura. Uh, the closing season starts from about August to December, the beginning of December or so around there. So there's about eight months of basketball that you could play in total, assuming that you didn't get cut or you didn't get injured uh, when you were in El Salvador. It's really important when you think about salaries because you won't be getting the full 12 months. In fact, that is extremely rare that you would even play the full eight months. Um, so if you're just thinking, okay, well, the average salary in El Salvador is $2,000. There's, there's 12 months in the year. I just made $24,000. But it doesn't work like that because, again, there's two seasons. There are only four months apiece. And this is assuming that you're staying for the whole season. Uh, it's very often that players get cut really quickly. They switch them out really quickly. It's a demanding league, just like how all pro leagues are. Uh, especially, it's really demanding on the imports just because the national level talent, meaning the Salvadorians who are playing in the league, uh, they aren't the greatest. That's just the that's just the facts so the the imports really have to carry their weight in every statistical category they have to rebound they have to they have to get assists they have to create shots for other people they have to play defense they have to score points boy do they have to score points in the end what's my conclusion to the el salvador basketball leagues i would say if you can get into the lmb if you cannot go ahead and take the lsb uh, beggars can't be choosers. This is a great beginning league for a lot of players. Like I said earlier, I've seen players go on from here to much better paying jobs, much more uh, professional and recognized leagues that have medical staffs and everything that you would think you would associate with professional basketball. But uh, overall, in Central America, this is one of the better leagues in terms of pay, in terms of production, in terms of uh, just overall experience. The fans are great. Uh, they really respect the basketball players there. And then that's more than you can ask for a lot of these Central American leagues that actually don't really have any sort of formation of a basketball league, don't really have any fanfare around it, don't really have much around it going on. Um, so El Salvador is a great option for a lot of people. If you found this video helpful, go ahead and give a like and subscribe. I appreciate it very much. It would help out the channel. And I hope on doing a few more videos like this throughout the world, throughout Latin America. Uh, if you want me to cover any type of country 
uh, just leave a comment below and uh, I'll be sure to get on to it. Thanks, guys.